Today is Monday, March 30th. We did calendar this morning with class, but I'll just show you over here. Today is Monday, March 30th, and it's another stay home week. Um, but it was really nice to get to see everybody in the class today. Uh, made me really happy to see all your smiling faces. I'm going to continue to do a book and a song and a little activity for um, on video so that you can watch this when you have time at your home. Okay, so today we're going to start with the book and we're going to read, it's a fiction story called The Three Little Daxies and it was written by Jan Brett. And she's the same author and illustrator who wrote the book called The Mitten and that's one we read uh, last week or the week before. So you might recognize some of these drawings, or the style of drawing. Okay, three little dassies. <clears throat> okay. Hot, hot, hot! The little dassies were almost grown up, and it was time for them to find their own place. Mimby, Pimby, and Timby waved goodbye to Mommy, Daddy, Aunties, Uncles, and all their cousins and set out for the distant mountain. Come and visit us, they shouted. A place cooler, a place less crowded, a place safe from big eagles. The sisters traveled all day and all night across the Nam Namib Desert, arriving at the foot of the mountain the next morning. This is where we will live, they agreed excitedly. Welcome, a squeaky voice called out from the screen. It came from a handsome, smiling Agama man. No one has lived here for a long, long time, just me and my family of eagles up on the mountain. Eagles? The three, sis the three little dassies shivered in the hot, hot sun kind of lizard, the Agama man. Where would they build their houses? Mimby eyed the long grasses. These grasses will make a lovely cool house, she said, and she set to work, cutting, twisting, braiding, and bundling. She finished in no time. Be near and dear, sisters, she said, crawling inside for a nap. Pimby spotted pieces of driftwood, silver from the sun, laying in the sand of the dry riverbed. These will make a fine wooden house, she said, and she set about collecting as many pieces as she could find. When it was finished, she hung up a hammock and called out, Be near and dear, sisters, while I rest my eyes. Timby looked at the rocks around their mountain. I will make a stone house, she said, but it won't be as easy to build as one made of brasses or sticks. And it wasn't. She had to work all day in the hot sun to get it finished in the time in time to sleep in it that night. A gama man had been watching them. He was happy they were staying on. He had missed having company. The three little dassies slept late into the morning as the sun rose higher and higher in the sky. The big old eagle who lived up on the mountain stretched his wings and flew down to look for a meal for his hungry chicks. Mimby woke up hungry and went outside. Suddenly, a long-winged shadow passed over her. The eagle, she cried, and hurried back into her grass house. I see you, Dassy, the eagle screeched and swooped down. I'll flap and I'll clap and I'll blow your house in, he squawked, beating the air with his wings until the grass roof sailed off. The eagle grabbed Mimby and lifted her up, up, up into his nest. But the eagle was greedy. No sooner had he dropped Mimby into the nest than he spotted Pimby in front of her stick house far below. Hold it. There. Two dassies would be double delicious, he thought, and down he went, feathers flying. Pimby looked up and saw him coming. She turned and ran back inside. 
The eagle landed and screeched, I'll flap and I'll clap and I'll blow your house in, he squawked. Twigs flew, sticks rattled until Pimsy's stick house fell apart. Just like Mimby, she felt herself being lifted high in the sky, plunked down in the eagle's nest. Timby looked out to call her sisters to come for breakfast of tasty seed porridge, but instead of a grass house and a stick house, she saw a long shadow streaking across the rocks. I see you, Dassy! Here I come! The eagle landed and shrieked, I'll flap and I'll clap and I'll blow your house in! He flapped and clapped and beat his wings. Dust and sand blew everywhere, but the stone house didn't move. He tried again, flapping and clapping even harder. Dust and sand got in his eyes, but the stone house didn't budge. Sounding like a familiar story to you? When the dust settled, the stone house was still standing, but the eagle was coughing and sneezing. His wing feathers were bent and broken, and he was missing tail feathers. Knowing when to quit, he hopped his way back up to the nest. At least he had two dassies waiting for his dinner. Oh, do you see what's going on here? The Agama man is helping, helping them get out of the nest. <clears throat> the eagle reached his nest, but the Dassies were gone. He looked down and saw them at the bottom of the mountain, heading for the stone house. It was his last chance. He streaked down toward the open chimney. Inside, the three sisters hugged each other. There's nothing like a stone house. When there are eagles abundant, they cried. Just then, the eagle tumbled down the chimney. I'll flap and I'll clap and I'll... A hot blast from the fire hit him. Fly home for a nap, he squealed. It, as fast as he could, he squeezed back up the chimney and flew home, all black and singed from the smoky fire. And Mimby, Pimby, and Timby never saw so much as a tail feather of that eagle ever again. Mommy, Daddy, Aunties, Uncles, and all their cousins, and a Gama man, too, had come to celebrate. Welcome, the sisters cried, to a place cooler, to a place less crowded, to a place safe from eagles. And if you travel to Namibia today, you will see Dassies living in stone houses with handsome Agama men looking out for them. As for the pesky eagles... They are, real, they are easily spotted, for their feathers are black as soot. See a picture? That's more like what they really look like. They don't wear clothes. The end. Did that story, was that story familiar to you? To me, it was all very similar to the three little pigs, wasn't it? Instead of pigs, there were dasties. And instead of a big bad wolf, there was a big bad eagle. All right, our song of the day is the next one, Little Bunny Foo Foo. We sang this one at our graduation show last year. Okay, here we go. Little Bunny Foo Foo's hopping through the forest, scooping up the field mice and bopping them on the head. Down came the good fairy, and she said, Little bunny foo foo, I don't want to see you scooping up the field mice and bopping them on the head. You have three chances. Little bunny foo foo's hopping through the forest, scooping up the field mice and bopping them on the head. Down came the good fairy, and she said, Little bunny foo foo, I don't want to see you scooping up the field mice and bopping them on the head. You have two more chances. Are you going to listen? Little bunny foo-foo's hopping through the forest, scooping up the field mice and bopping them on the head. Down came the good fairy, and she said, Little bunny foo-foo, I don't want to see you scooping up the field mice and bopping them on the head. You have one more chance. Are you going to listen? Little bunny foo-foo's hopping through the forest, scooping up the field mice and bopping them on the head. Down came the good fairy, and she said, Abra, 
Kadabra. Poof! And turn little bunny Foo Foo into a frog. Ribbit. 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 <laughs> All right. So today we're going to do some scale rhymes, some that we've done before, so you can say them with me, and then uh, a new one that I think we have not done yet. Okay, so we'll start with the balloon. So everybody get your balloon ready. Oh, this was right. Okay, ready to get your balloon. Blow up your balloon, hold it really tight. Hold onto the string, let's go for a ride. Here come all the birds flying from the trees, chasing our balloons. Stop, birds, please. Pop, 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 pop. Did the birds get your balloon? Okay, we'll do the squirrel's nest. Saw a little squirrel walking in the woods, looking up and down for something really good. He saw some nuts high up in the trees. He climbed up to the top and he dropped some down to me. Plop, 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 bonk. Ouch, that last nut hit me on the head. <laughs> All right, now this is a silly one. The baby birds. Listen for that last bird, okay? It goes like this. Baby birds in the nest. Mama bird was gone. Hungry little birds can't sing any song. Mama bird came back with a worm in her beak. Now the little birds all begin to speak. Peep, 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 squeak. Hear that bird? That last little bird? Let's try that one again. Peep, 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 peep squeak. Ow. Okay, and then this one's called Spider's Climb. I think this is a new one that we haven't done yet. The spider started climbing up the water spout to see what was up there and to look all about. The spider kept on climbing until it reached the top. And then it started raining. The drips begin to drop. Drip, drop, drip, drop, drip, drop, drip, whoosh! Reminds me of the song, The Itsy Bitsy Spider. Should we try that one again? It goes like this. The spider started climbing up the water spout to see what was up there and to look all about. The spider kept on climbing until it reached the top. Then it started raining. The drips began to drop. Drip, drop, drip, drop, drip, drop, drip, whoosh! All right. I hope that everyone has a wonderful day, and I will see you again tomorrow.